Okay, uh, this build is going to be in two parts. Part one is going to be the frame. So we bought a heap of these drawers. They're just from Kmart. Uh, they are cheap, cheaply made. But what I've done is built the frame around those. Um, one, I don't like making drawers. And two, I don't have time to make a heap of drawers. But um, I'll show you how I did it. Show you a few things I got wrong. Uh, part two is going to be this countertop that goes right across the top. Beauty. All right, let's do it. All right, here we go. So this project, I want to use up as many pallets as I can that I have lying around the house. So a lot of this framework, it's going to be used by just using all these standard pallet slats. They're about 25 mil thick, they're pine. Uh, really good for making up all of this framework. The timber's a little bit ugly, not a big deal. It's all going to be painted white in the end. Um, so yeah, I've got to get rid of all this stuff. But the other thing is lots of people out using pallets because they're stuck at home. So they're doing lots of DIY stuff. So use what I got and um, I'll clear out the shed a bit, which is a good thing too. Okie dokie. So uh, after flattening them, I wanted that nice gluing surface. I'm now going to square everything up. So first edge is always done with the straightening jig, uh, regardless of how square I think the pallet is it's most likely a little bit out of whack. So this just gives me that good starting reference point uh, so I can then come back along and rip everything nice and parallel. So it's nice and square and then I can laminate it all together or whatever I'm gonna do and it's a reasonably good stock. Okay, so I'm going to make my own mortises and tenons. So again, it's with all with the pallet slats. So for the tenon pieces, it's, uh, it's basically two pieces laminated together. For the mortises, I'm gonna cut out the two halves of each mortise um, and then glue them together. So I'm not gonna be using the mallet and chisel to create that mortise. Um, I do have a YouTube video on this process alone. Uh, if you wanted me to slow it right down and show you everything, this, this video will show you what you need, give you some ideas, um, but that video will be a little bit more detailed and that one is out now. Um, however, we'll press on. So, like I said, um, we're going to just cut half of the mortise on the table saw, check it out, and then clean it up with the chisel because that's about all I'd like to use a chisel for. Uh, then my tenons, which will be made again out of the two pallet slats, will slot in just like that. That's just to show you how it's going to work. The two mortises will be glued together, and then we're going to bash that tenon in later on with a mallet. Okay, so do the other side, and I've got a heap of those to do, which we don't need to see that on video. I'm gonna get all my mortises now glued together with those two pallet slats. I'm using Type Bond 3, and I have that nice, flat, smooth surface to get a really nice bond. So these things, they're not gonna come apart. Moving on with the tenons, as you can see, again, it's just two pallet slats laminated together. I just set the depth of the table saw to half a pallet slat, set up a stock block, then run the table saw around each side um, uh, for the cross cut. I'll then take it over to the band saw and remove the waste to create my tenon. Super fast and very easy. But again, pretty lucky that I now have a band saw. But you could remove all that waste just by merely running it through the table saw. A lot more work, but just as effective. I'm not using a stop block, so the, the cut from the table saw, it's more than enough to sneak up on it with the band saw. And the other bonus is, all the waste is just pushed out the back, keeping the fingers well clear of that blade. I've now lined up all four mortises, clamped all four posts together in one hit, and then I'm gonna whip off each end of these posts so they're all exactly the same, and the rails will be exactly the same height off the ground when we get to the building process. 
All right, what's going on here? Ah, more gluing, more clamping, what do you know? Okay, so I need more stock, I need to glue and clamp, more timber together. But again, it's a pretty cool way to get some nice chunky beams. Alrighty, uh, what's up next? Okay, half laps. I'm gonna do half laps on the top of these frameworks. And again, same process, the cross cut with the table saw. Take it over to the band saw, remove the waste. Voila, you have a half lap. Good to go. I've got all my pieces. Now I just go ahead and glue it all up. Again, I've slowed this process down on my previous video showing this whole process of the mortise and tenons and the half laps. Okay, here's my first balls up. So, set up my half laps, had all the stop blocks, you beauty. Didn't take into consideration the thickness of the blade. So look at that. It's a good three or four mil play on either side. So I pretty much went back and made them uh, again. So marking out directly off the frame, cutting on the correct side of the line, and you get yourself a nice snug fit, just like that. Check square, clamp, done. I don't have a Japanese handsaw, and I've also got RSI in my right elbow at the moment. So I'm just gonna do this, whip, and they're gone. And that is the end result of the mortise and tenon. Um, I have put a little bit of glue in there to fill the gaps, but they are pretty tight and very happy with how it all turned out. All right, believe it or not, I actually bought some timber. It was for a project I was working on before this, which was going to be a pallet wall for my wife's business. That is on hold, just like the whole world. So I'm moving on to more important things. And because I've got this timber in the shed, I'm gonna use it on this project and it's to help make some more framework. Right, uh, what are we doing here? All right, we need more timber because I need more frames. So I've done two so far, I need another two. So I'm gonna whip some more through the same process, mortise and tenons, all that stuff, uh, to get the job done. Uh, okay, I'm pulling a box apart now. What am I doing that for? Right, I need more timber because I need some more stock. So I'm gonna rip that thing apart, rip it down, <laughs> glue it together and make some more chunky beams. And I do like how they turned out, just quietly. I tell you what, I do love this thicknesser. Catches all the dust, and it does all the hard work for me. Does it get any better than that? Anyway, you know what I'm doing here. I'm gluing and clamping, so let's just get on to the next bit. Okay, this part, this is me being a dickhead and uh, that's really important because that's who I am. Alrighty, more mortise and tenons. As I said, I need two more frames. So this is basically just some other angles. You've all seen how that's done already. Um, so I've got nothing else to say. Do you like my T-shirt? Alrighty, I'm now gonna cut out a few rebates in the top corners so the rails can run from frame to frame and it's all gonna make sense in a minute, trust me. Anyway, I'm taking these little squares out of the corner so that I can then build this framework around these sets of drawers that I've pre-purchased. They are just a cheap set of drawers and in fact, there's probably a lot of people out there who have this sort of furniture in their house. So if anything from this video, it might give you an idea of how you can work around something you already have to make it a little bit cooler, a little bit more unique. Anyway, pocket holes, framework, watch along. I'm gonna basically build around that square box to make my first set of framework. This is two parts to this lower framework. Um, so I'm basically gonna do the same thing twice. So the big bonus of using a pre-purchased or an old piece of furniture like this one is I know it's nice and square so I can just glue and screw and work my way around it to make up the framework pretty quickly, pretty easily 
and I'll end up with a not a bad effect at the end. Okay, so I'm just going to mark out, pre-drill, countersink, put some screws in and effectively turn this flimsy little box of drawers into a super solid uh, piece of framework. I've got some more recycled MDF from other old crappy furniture I've pulled apart from probably one of the kids' rooms. I'm just making up some kickboard to sort of finish off the lower part of the framework. Okay, and a quick look, here are the two um, pieces of framework or two cabinets joined together. There's that rail running across the front going through the checkouts of my um, in the corners right there. Uh, I think I might show you that a bit closer in a second. Just hang on, hold, be patient, wait for it. There it is. So you can see the original half lap and now I've got those rails running through the corner checkout. So really strengthening up all that um, joinery and also give me a nice flush timber piece across the front. All right, here we go, time check square, check square, check square, check square, check square, check square, square, check square, check square, check square, 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 check square, what the, check square, oh, hang on, what's going on here? Check square, check square, check square, check square, check square, check square, 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 oh no, Jesus, we're sanding, we've finished checking square, and painting, we're painting now, very exciting stuff. I'm just going to throw a bit of white on, and the beauty of that is it hides all the little imperfections of that joinery. Okay, last thing I'm going to show you for the joinery, I've just whipped out this checkout using the mitre saw, cleaning it up with the chisel. Going to throw a few pocket holes in, just to basically put a bit of a kickboard down the bottom, but also strengthen up that lower part of the framework. Um, it's more for looks, and um, I think it looks pretty cool. All right. Here is the frame, painted, finished, and ready for my next trick, which is not a very good trick at all. Stand by. Right, here's me balls up for uh, this project. So these drawers, to look at them, I thought they were flush with the edge of their own cabinet, uh, only to find out that they were actually about a millimeter proud. So then when I built this frame, they didn't go in. So I had to cut all these edges off with the table saw, which I'll show you how I did. So I've recovered it, but a bit of a whoopsie-daisy. But now it's good to go. So like I said, I've only got to take off about a millimeter from each side. So I'm gonna set up a stop block um, to do at least one side of each of these drawers. I'll then adjust that stop block because of the, not that one, this one, um, so they basically all cut the same, so when I put my drawers in, they're not all wonky donkey and out of whack. So I can film myself putting three drawers in and they actually go into their slots nicely, just like that. Okay, so part two, which will be out very soon, will be for this slab top, so I'm using the brick method. I um, uh, made the decision to finish building it actually on the framework so I get it nice and flat, nice and straight. Don't want a wonky donkey bench top, nobody does. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you again for that build.